HR issues can kill you. One complaint against your company can turn your world upside down. And you spend way too much time dealing with HR when you should be spending your time on making a profit. You should talk to Bambi. With Bambi, get access to your own dedicated U.S.-based HR manager starting at just $99 per month. They get to know you and your business while providing HR expertise and the personal touch you need and want. They're available by phone, email, and real-time chat, so onboarding and terminations run smoothly. Team members reach peak performance, and your business stays compliant with changing HR regulations. And with Bambi's HR Autopilot, you'll automate important HR practices like setting policies, training, and feedback. HR managers can easily cost 80 grand a year, but Bambi starts at $99 per month. Schedule your free conversation today to see how much Bambi can take off your plate. Go to Bambi.com right now and type in Accelerate under podcast when you sign up. It'll really help the show. Spelled BAM, B-E-E dot com. Bambi.com. Type in Accelerate. Introducing touch-free payments from PayPal, a safe way for your customers to pay. Simply download the PayPal app and display your own unique QR code for your customers to scan. Whether you're a market seller, I'll take two tomatoes and a cucumber. poodle pamperer, <laughs> piano tuner, or plumber, signing up to accept touch-free payments for your business is easy. Touch-free QR code payments. Shop safe with PayPal. Welcome to Accelerate Your Business Growth with your host, Diane Helbig. Diane is a leading small business development and leadership coach, author, and speaker who is passionate about sharing valuable ideas, tips, and techniques with business professionals worldwide. Diane brings you the world's experts and gurus in all things business, whether it's sales, structure, social media, planning, or plateauing, guests bring their expertise and energy to each episode. When growing your business is your focus, Accelerate Your Business Growth is the show to listen to. Got a topic or guest suggestion? Let Diane know. The goal is to make sure you have the information you need to move your business forward. Thanks for joining us. Settle in and enjoy. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Today's podcast is sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken audio entertainment and information. Listen to audiobooks whenever and wherever you want. Get a free book when you sign up for a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com slash business growth. Accelerate Your Business Growth podcast continues to to enjoy inclusion on lists of the best podcasts to listen to for business owners, business leaders, sales professionals, uh, and the like. Um, that This is due in large part to the guests who join me. These are folks who have expertise in certain areas of business. And they join me for a conversation about that expertise so that you, the listener, can get the information you need, get answers to questions you have, ideas, techniques, whatever it is that you are looking for that you can implement in your business so that you can do better things. Today, my guest is Lindsay Anvik. Lindsay is a fourth generation entrepreneur and CEO of Sea Endless Inc. She travels the world giving seminars on productivity, leadership, and marketing to everyone from Fortune 500 companies to major museums to mom and pop companies. She develops webinars and education series to help companies grow and develop happier and more motivated workforces. Her company, See Endless, is focused around helping leaders and employees tap into their endless potential. Thanks so much for joining me today, Lindsay. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. 
I am thrilled to have you here. We're going to be talking about, uh, you know, productivity and profitability and, and whatnot. And I have a burning question for you. <laughs> um, <Good. laughs> and that is, um, would you consider a to-do list uh, to, um, is it being productive using a to-do list? I think that's sort of a first step in productivity, but I think it's more organization. To me, the to-do list is great for getting down all the tasks that you need to do, but productivity comes from prioritizing that task list or that to-do list and putting the amount of time and effort into those most important or most pressing tasks um, first, and that is sort of the gateway to being a lot more productive. Okay, that's great because I use to-do lists. Um, I know a lot of people do, and a lot of people say to us, oh, you can't use a to-do list, you know, blah, blah. But it really, like for me, it helps me remember things that if I don't write them down, they're going to be gone. Of course, and, yes. Right? And I'll, yes. and I'll never get them back. So, but, but I get what you're saying, that it's what do you do with that list and how do you prioritize the things that you – really need to be working on first. Right? right. So get everything down, download everything, and then sort of take that list and write a new list in the order of importance and how uh, much time you want to spend on those things and what can be delegated to someone else or what can be backburnered for another month or a few more weeks. And, you know, then you start to have a lot more focus on what's the most important or what's the most pressing or what's the most profitable. And that will sort of help you, you know, the next step. But I totally agree. Writing things down is critical to remembering everything, you know, especially in today's age, it's so hard to keep focused for long. So, yeah. you know, getting it down somewhere is really important, you know, and um, if that's all you can do, then, you know, at least you're getting everything down. But I think there's, you know, if you can take it a step further, it can help um, yeah. maximize your time. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. That, that makes sense to me. And, and I think um, a lot of times we convince ourselves or we allow ourselves to believe, maybe a better way of saying it, that all of the things on our list are critical. And okay, but not necessarily right now, right? You have to right. look at it and say, what really need, what do I really need to be spending my time and attention on right now? Yes. And yeah, okay. Because otherwise, do you feel like then you just don't do anything, and so right. nothing really gets accomplished? Yes. Um, and I think that's where sort of blocking your days off onto those specific tasks, once you've prioritized them, allows you to know, to one, focus on one thing at a time, which I think a lot of us have a very hard time doing. And I think that is also a way to be a lot more productive, because if you're on your phone and you're trying to write an email or you're trying to work and you're looking at email at the same time, you're not being as productive as you could be. But, you know, blocking off your days in terms of tasks, you know, or meetings, you know, and adding in meetings or whatever it may be, you know, in between there can let you know that you'll get to that, but not till three o'clock, but it's going to get done, but it's going to get done at three o'clock. And then your whole focus can be on whatever that, you know, whatever the task at the time is which can really allow your days to just flow a lot better and have your focus yeah. be better because you know it's going to get done. It just is going to get done at two or it may get done in half an hour, just not now. But Yeah, it sort of frees your brain up so you don't have to keep worrying about it because you know you've got it scheduled to work on. Yes. And also huh. giving yourself a limit on how much you're willing to spend on something. You know, I find that so many times, you know, leaders, um, they – will say, okay, I've got to get this marketing plan done, or I've got to figure out the content schedule for social media, and it'll take them two weeks. Whereas if you say, okay, I'm going to spend an hour on this and just this, you can actually get quite a bit done. Now, maybe not all of it, but you know, it's really important to limit how much time and give yourself sort of an end, end time for how much time you're willing to spend um, on things because it can just go on forever and ever and then nothing gets completed because there's no yeah. definitive sort of end time, which yeah, is less, right. people being less productive. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things I love about what you just said was 
um, that it's okay to not complete it during that period of time, but at least you'll be further along than you were before you actually, you know, sat down and started working on whatever it is. Right. And you may find that you can actually get it done in an hour and you don't need to spend two weeks trying to figure out that marketing plan. You know, when I give seminars, I, it used to take me a week. I used to spend three or four full days researching. And what would happen is I would get way too deep into the research and articles and I would spend way too much in that part of it. And I found that I give myself a four hour limit in terms of sort of research and development for a a new talk that I want to give and cap myself. And then if I have other articles that I find along the way, that's interesting, then I can save those for later. But right now that's all, that's all that I'm willing to give myself. And now I can get a talk done in a day, you know, or in a couple of hours as opposed to a whole week, which was not a productive use of my time. Yeah. And I'm someone yeah. who talks on productivity. <laughs> so yeah. you know, we, all, we all have, you know, sort of falter and have to sort of look at how we <laughs> make some of these yeah. errors and, you know, where we can self-correct. Yeah. No kidding. That's so funny. So um, when, when, you know, when people are listening to this and they're thinking, okay, um, so it, this is really about designing your day in a better way, right? Yes. Is, is that what you mean when, you know, when you talk about designing a better day, that it's about slotting these things in at particular times of the day and then sort of letting it go until that time shows up? Yes. I think that can be a huge game changer for a lot of people because when the day is open in between a few meetings or calls, like I said, with the, my, just my previous example, you can end up yeah. spending so much more time than is necessary because there is no end time. Whereas if you know at 11 o'clock, you're going to move on to something else. It's like, well, I better get this focused because I, I need to move on. And when you start to put that into practice day after day, week after week, you'll see you're getting things done quicker. You're moving through tasks easier. Uh, and funny enough, I sort of block out about maybe three and a half, four days out of my week. And I let a couple of hours a day, a couple of hours on Friday kind of, they're open because I found when I slotted every single thing in, I would resist it. Even though I was trying to implement my own, (laughs) my own productivity (laughs) tools, I, as a human was just like, oh, no one's going to tell me what to do every single hour of the day. You know, I needed some sort of free time to, um, to just, you know, sort of, you know, not be locked in every day. So like I said, in terms of putting it into practice, you don't have to do it all day, every day. Maybe just start with your mornings and have from nine to 12, just be slotted with tasks, you know, 20 minutes on this or 30 minutes or an hour, and you'll see the difference. And that will make you want to design your days more like that so that you can get more done. I really appreciate this because I can imagine there are people listening saying to themselves, okay, that that's unrealistic because I can schedule all I want, but people are going to interrupt me and people are going to need me to help with something. And so that whole plan that I create is just going to get, you know, blown out the window the minute I walk in the door and stuff starts taking over. But so, you know, what you're talking about is, um, if, if I'm hearing you correctly, it's, okay, you don't have to do it for the whole day and you don't have to do it for every day. Right. And it sounds to me like if, if the leader commits to this block of time, then they can say to people, not now. Right. Like that's okay. Right. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And have open hours as part of one of the tasks. Have it from 11 to 12 every day. And so if you've got, if there's something pressing, obviously, that cannot wait, that needs an answer right that moment. And how many times is that really true? That doesn't necessarily happen all the time. So that's sort of an exception. (laughs) But other than that, they can probably wait till 10 or 11 o'clock and then, you know, come in those office hours. And that way a boss isn't interrupted all day. And, you know, people know that if I need an answer, I need to get in there between 10 and 11, because that's the time when they're sort of free to chat and when I can get an answer from them. And then you are starting to train your employees 
to be more productive by saying, okay, th yeah. these are the two hours in the day where, you know, it's an open. And if it's super pressed thing, then, then of course you can come and interrupt me, but then it allows the workers to be more productive because then they know when they need to sort of get their materials together to get an answer. And the boss isn't interrupted every five minutes by employees needing something. Exactly. Yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, schedule that time. I, I love that. Okay, now talk to me about email because this is the other thing I hear from, from people that their the email is constant. It takes over their life and so they, they never have time for anything else, which I don't believe, but how do they stop that? Right. I think we all have this issue. We all get so many emails and I think text message is the same way where it's yeah. just nonstop all day long. And so what I would suggest is, and I've seen this before, Tim Ferriss, who wrote the four hour work week, who's <laughs> another sort of genius with productivity. He talked about having an sort of auto reply to people saying in an effort to be more productive, you know, I'm only answering emails on these days and these days. And I'd never seen it put into practice until a few years ago. And I got an email back from someone and they said, in an effort to be more productive, I only answer emails between two and three. And I thought to myself, who does this joker think he is you know, <laughs> telling me that, you know, and then I thought, he's a genius. He's a, he's yeah. a complete genius. <laughs> um, and I don't think that uh, that can work for all businesses or all business owners, but I do think that there is value in understanding when the bulk of your emails come in. Usually it's between 10 and 12, and then usually between two and four. And so maybe at the top of every hour, you check your email. And if you don't have anything, then you focus on that task that you had blocked out for or having that meeting or whatever it may be. And you know, that way you aren't away from it for so long. But the other thing is to train your clients and employees that if it's critical, call. If you need an immediate answer or if it's something that can't wait and for a few hours, call me. Otherwise, know that I won't necessarily get back to you the second that you write me back. Because right. we, are, you know, if our clients are always expecting that immediate, immediate response within two minutes, you know, that can sort of be detrimental long term because we can't always be there. And then when we aren't available, then they think something's wrong as opposed to the fact that we were just busy. And so if from the start, they understand I'm always available. If it's something critical call, if not, then I check email, you know, four or five times a day or at the top of the hour. And so that may be a good time to reach me. If not, I'll probably get back to you in an hour or two. So then you can kind of carve out time every hour, or every two hours to answer email, read and answer emails. And that way, it's not interrupting you all day long because that also gets in the way of productivity. If you're trying to focus on planning a campaign or an event and there's, you know, your emails dinging every two minutes, how can you focus on anything? How will you ever get that done? So, um, that's right. No one is. Right? <laughs> so, um, this is so great because, uh, one thing I will say that, that you have been saying, and I, I guess I just want to repeat it is, I think then you got to make sure that that answering email time is on your calendar because I could see people going, okay, well, um, I'm <clears throat> you know, you know, shut down my email and I'm not going to respond to it. And I've let people know and then never getting back to it, right. which could be equally dangerous. Yes. So, I mean, that's, that's a great tip that putting that in maybe every, you know, sort of 15 minutes out of every hour or every two hours to make sure you can scan and reply to anything crucial. And then maybe have a time in the afternoon where you can really reply to anything that isn't super urgent. Yeah. 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 Just so you know, you, you're doing it. I, I, right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And, and you talk about the concept of killing two birds with one task. Can you expand on that? Please. So what I try to do as much as possible is try to do two things at once. Um, so if I, you know, every day I have breakfast and lunch and coffee. So I try to make time either with friends or with clients to have FaceTime with them for those meals because it may get hard after work. People have kids, they have other, th other responsibilities and it's a, you have to eat anyway. 
So you may as well t use that time to have good friend time, good family time, good client time. And that way you're doing, you know, you're getting a meal in, but you're also sort of getting that face time in, which is really important. You know, the other way to do this is instead of whenever you're seeing an article that's really great and you want to read it right then, I always try to save it to the Evernote app or some somewhere. And then when I'm in line or I'm waiting for something, mm -hmm. then I pull up that Evernote app or I pull up my notes and I click on that article because I'm waiting in the car, I'm waiting on the grocery store line. And it, it's a time for me to kind of get that article read because I'm interested in it, but it didn't interrupt that task. So I was able to be productive right when I saw it, but know that I'll get to it at a different time. And that way you're able to do two things at once. Same thing with when you're driving, that's a great time to make birthday calls or check in with people, you know, on your commute so that you can, you know, get a good 10, 15 minute conversation in and have some connection and not feel so guilty about, uh, who do I have to call this week? Or I should have called her back, but I didn't, you know, maybe use your commute time as a, you know, a moment to make those connections. And that way every week, you know, that you're going to call a few people and, um, get, you know, check all those other things off your list, you know, some of those personal things off your list. Yeah, that's so great. <clears throat> when you were talking about when you're driving, it, it reminded me that um, I do a lot of I will say writing when I drive, I just record whatever it is into my phone. I love that. So, yeah. Cause that, and that's when I think of these things too, you know, you can't write them down, but right. if I just turn on the recorder and then I can just stream of consciousness or whatever it is. And then I have a blog post or an article yes. for LinkedIn yes. or something. I just so have smart. to write it down later. Yeah. That's yeah. so smart. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I get that. I totally get that. And and I do have to say, so this past <clears throat> year during the holidays, I thought, oh my God, how am I going to see all of these people who I would really like to see, but there are only so many hours in the day. So I just scheduled one event and invited all of these women. And then whoever came, came and we had a great time, but that was it. You right. know, I got to see them all at the same time and they got to meet each other and so I, I get this, like maximizing um, the time that you have. Right. And yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And thought about it that way, but, but it does. Um, okay, so, and, and you have something called sweat working. <laughs> can, can you? <laughs> okay, what is it? And you say it's been a game changer for you, so I want to know all about it. Well, having, being a business owner, I found that the me time that I so desperately needed for myself would get pushed aside and I would constantly use work as an excuse. And so I would miss workouts, which are so good for us health wise, but also mentally. I find that I f have really great ideas and thoughts sort of when I'm doing something like working out. So I started implementing that as also a way to sort of kill sort of two birds with one task. So I'll meet a friend and we'll take a yoga class or we'll do a spin class or something, or I'll, I'll invite a client to come with me. And we have that time before, and then we are both doing something positive and good for ourselves. And then afterwards, we're on a high because those endorphins are flowing, we're in a great mood, and then we have a little more time to chat. And then we leave and I know I can feel good knowing that I did something good for myself, but I also had time with a client or I had time with a friend and it was just a much better use of my time because then I didn't have to feel as guilty about it. And yeah. because I was meeting someone there, I was even more apt to do it because yeah. I couldn't right. use work as an excuse and say, oh, I should probably spend more time working on this pitch or I should, uh, I should probably be writing right now. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to meet a friend also, or I'm going to meet a client or a potential client, and that could be a really great use of my time, you know, and, right. and it's hard for people to have a bad time when the endorphins are flowing and they're doing something good for themselves. And then you have a bonded experience and yeah. that can also connect people and can lead to them wanting to work with you or just sort of strengthening your relationship with friends. Yeah, I, I, that, that is great. I'm going to have to, uh, you know, sock that one away and really give that one some thought. Cause I, I have the same, 
it's how, you know, once again, it's how do you fit these things in? There's only so many hours in a day and there's a lot that you want to do. And so when you, where you can double up, it's a great idea. Right. And then I also found that I would want to go have drinks with a client or I'd want to have, you know, drinks or dinner with a friend and, but then I wouldn't get my, my own time in. Yeah. And so by combining those two, you know, I'm able to yeah. feel like I get both of those things done, be more productive. And then of course I have the rest of my evening to do other things. Right. Exactly. Wow. It's fascinating. All right, I have to take a quick sponsor break and then sure. I have more questions. Accelerate Your Business Growth Podcast is happy to be sponsored by Audible.com. Audible.com is a leading provider of spoken digital audio entertainment and information. They have over 150,000 titles to choose from and you can listen to them on any device, including whatever you're hearing us on right now. And if you sign up at our link, which is audibletrial.com slash businessgrowth, you get one free audiobook and a one month trial of the service. Some examples of books you can listen to on audible.com are Leadership Unchained by Sarah Canaday and The Power of Positive Coaching by Lee Kalan. So visit audibletrial.com slash business growth, explore the books that are of interest to you and receive one free audiobook when you sign up for the trial. Today we're speaking with Lindsay Anvik about how profitability comes from productivity. So we talked about email and we talked about scheduling and this sort of thing. Um, what are some apps that you uh, think are valuable that can help us manage our lives and our businesses better? I love Asana or a Basecamp, which is uh, a software platform, but it's also an app that helps you organize projects, keep track of changes. And then instead of going back and forth on email, you know, managers can sort of quickly assign tasks and follow up on the status by logging in. People can comment on documents and share files without having to go back and forth on email. And again, that sort of can interrupt that productivity or flow and you can watch a project and see how it's progressing or make comments easily without having so much email and all having things all in one place. And then because it's on an app, Managers can sort of have a bird's eye view of tasks on the go or where things are or easily comment or give feedback. So I love those two. Um, chat applications like Slack or Skype are an easy way to cut down on inbox clutter and get feedback and answers quickly. So instead of waiting on an email reply, teams can communicate or share files without having to wait on people to email back and forth. They can just quickly ask a question or ask the group for feedback or comments. And that way it just makes everything flow quicker as opposed to sending an email, waiting for them to see it, waiting for them to respond, sending, you know, an answer back and then you, you being able to see it and reply. I also love, like I said, I love Evernote as a way to sort of save articles for later so that you can not miss out on those great reads that you want to get to, but also not interrupt your productivity along the way. Um, cam scanner is a great one. What it basically is, is a, a card scanner that when you get a business card, I find it gets so many business cards when I go to a networking event or a show and they end up either in the trash or I can't remember or the, you know, I can't, or I, I'll want someone's business card and then I can't find it. And so basically you take a picture with your phone. They have, it's for Android, Android and, um, iPhone. And then it pulls the data from the card and puts it right in your contacts on your phone. And then you can add notes or add a photo of the person or make some kind of reference and you can organize it. So I have them organized by networking groups. I have them organized by whether they're sort of bloggers or podcasters versus, you know, um, uh, marketing people or whatever it may be. And that allows me to um, get those contacts in my phone without having to do a lot more work. So, um, yeah. and besides Cam Scanner, there's several other ones that are free. They have some, some that are uh, paid, but that are also great. So if you just look up either Card Scanner or Business Card Scanner in the search uh, for an ad in the, in the app store, there's a bunch of choices that are great to sort of help with productivity. I use, uh <clears throat> excuse me, cam card. I love that. Yeah. It's so great. Yeah. I mean, it really, I, I, that one, um, 
I've been using for years, and you're right. It makes it so easy to capture that information from those cards. Then you have it with you, and you don't have to have, you know, those binders with all the business cards in them, and it's just sort of cuckoo. Right. And I think also what you mentioned before, what you do in the car, it's great if you don't have time to write it all down is to just record those notes to yourself or an idea yeah. and then you can come back to it later. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so another question that I had for you is a lot of us are procrastinators for a variety of reasons. Um, but what are other ways that we sabotage our productivity? And then how do we stop it? Like, what do we do to change it? I think that not having a good handle on how long it takes you to do certain tasks that you do all the time is a way to de destroy productivity. And this goes back to what I was saying earlier about giving yourself constraints and allowing yourself a, 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 a start and an end to a task. And once you do that over and over again, you can really understand that, okay, it takes me about 45 minutes to write a good pitch. And then, when you, then you'll get even more productive because then you know where to slot it in your schedule and how to sort of write it. So I think that's one way is that we don't put limits on tasks, which makes it yeah. never ending. Yeah. I also think that we allow people to interrupt us constantly. So having a phone, you know, um, on, you know, constantly is not great. So maybe just the, you know, really important people, like maybe your kid's school, your top clients, and, you know, a few others, you know, have a different ringtone and they're allowed, but the rest, you know, you sort of put on silent while you're trying to work so you can focus on that one thing. And then when you have a break or you're taking a little bit of a, um, a for a coffee or whatever it may be, you can check and to make sure the world hasn't blown up, which I'm sure it probably hasn't. Um, and um, so I, I think the phone is also just a huge distraction. So, you know, maybe it's taking the social media off of your phone for a little bit of time or it's restricting the amount of screen time that you spend on social media. So I know that Instagram and Facebook have things now where you can say, you can set the amount of time per day that you want to spend on it. So maybe it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes and it'll let you know you've been on Instagram for 10 minutes, you know, and it's like, okay, now it's time to get off because how much of my day do I want to waste on some of those things? Right. And I think we, what happens is we get on and, you know, we look at someone's cute dog and then seven hours later, we're, you know, who knows where, somewhere deep in the, you know, sort of archives <laughs> of Facebook, looking up our, you know, high school boyfriends, you know, yeah. new girlfriend, daughters, you know, dog's wedding, you know, I mean, it's, we get yeah. so deep into it. So I think social is a really important yeah. thing to manage and to pay attention because I don't think people even realize how mindless it is you know, whenever we have a free moment we just sort of immediately boot up and look online because just we just want to be entertained you know entertained or we want our mind sort of instead of just taking a moment and not spending it on that spending on something else like reading an article you care about or sending a text to someone who matters to you or whatever it may be yeah so I found this thing. I, I so agree with you. And I found this thing called Lil Space. Mm -hmm. And it's an app that you can put on your phone. And so <clears throat> you, you set it and you unplug. And so that. when you set it, you, you can say what you're working on. Um, and you can also have a message in there so that if someone calls you, it automatically sends them a message saying, hey, I'm unplugged. I'll get back to you as soon as I plug back in. And it's really weird because I use it and I'm amazed at how long I, I can just like put my phone down and totally walk away for hours. Yes. Because I, I'm just, and then when you're done, you can like even post if you want that you just unplugged for however long and you were working on whatever you don't have to, but, and I don't, but it, it's amazing how valuable that is. Yes, Absolutely. We, we waste way too much time on our phones these days yeah. on things that don't matter, or we allow ourselves to get sucked in by whatever may be happening on text message or whatever else. And 
Uh, I think that's great. Little Space sounds great. I'd love to check it out. I, another app that's similar to that is the Space app, which sort of helps you sort of break some phone addiction and things like that. But you know, anything that you can put on your phone that can sort of help you with this issue that we all have, it's sort of across our society now is yeah. a way to help you be more productive and just focus on what you need to focus on then. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> it's it, And it's a decision, right, that we, we get to make, we can make, and it, which is for me always the good news is that we have it in our control to make these decisions. This is how we're going to operate moving yes. forward. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It has to be a conscious decision and it can be a hard truth because when I was getting the yeah. updates of how much I was spent, I could not believe it. I was horrified. <laughs> you know, having it in your face. And I was like, this needs to be addressed immediately. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's how it gets ele good. elevated. Right. right. Not so, how I want to yeah. go out, you know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so there, there's something like called like gamification of scheduling. Um, can you talk some about like what that is and how it can help people get motivated to be more productive? So, it's interesting that when we were in school, we had to get assignments done by the end of the period, unless it was homework, or we had to get a test done within a certain amount of time. And we always did it because for the most part, because that we needed to do it and it was within 10 minutes. And so we, we finished the quiz in 10 minutes and there's a part of our brain that gets excited about sort of winning and sort of beating the clock. And so in addition to sort of blocking your schedule, what you can do is sort of set a timer to see if you can beat it within that time. So that allows you to sort of gamify your schedule. So maybe it's researching for a talk or maybe it's figuring out new content for social media and you say, okay, I want 10 new ideas and I'm gonna give myself an hour and just trying to beat the clock. Then you have the countdown going and it's like, okay. and then automatically your brain wants to do it within with under that time limit because we want to prove to ourselves that we can beat it and the, there's something very satisfying in allowing ourselves to be under that kind of pressure even though it's self-induced it can be a great way to get people sort of moving and motivated and help with getting things done even quicker than we thought, because then if we know we can get something done in a certain amount of time, it allows us to make room for other things. And the next time we schedule it, maybe we don't need 45 minutes. Maybe we only need half an hour or 15 minutes. Oftentimes we really don't know how long it really takes us to do a task because we're so divided in our mind or on our phone or email or whatever it may be, where it may actually only really take us 15 minutes of really concentrating to get something done. And so by putting yeah. some kind of timer on, that allows us to think about it as a game. Like, how can I beat this? How can, I, can, I can outdo myself. And that can be motivating for a lot of people. That's crazy. I mean, I love it. I don't mean crazy like, are you out of your mind? I, I, I love that idea. Wow. I never would have thought of that idea. But yeah, that, that is, that's one I'm going to have to try. That, that and you'll find awesome. yourself wanting to do it more and more. Like the more you find yourself beating the clock, the more you're going to want to beat the clock. Yeah. Because you're like, okay, like I'm, I'm actually, I can actually get a lot done. And then it, 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 those successes build on each other. And then you, you gain more confidence. And then you, you know, as you see yourself working through more tasks, getting more things done and getting them done more quickly, that success builds upon itself, you gain more confidence, and you just want more of your days to be like that. And so you end up designing your days and sort of putting that timer in because it's, it's a way to kind of keep things going. I see. So you train yourself, really. I mean, right. through by, by, that's so interesting. And you can also do it in, in meetings too. You know, instead of having an hour staff meeting, see if you can do it in 45. And oh, all of a sudden, everyone, that idea. <laughs> <laughs> everyone has 15 more minutes in their day to get work done instead of, exactly. you know, hanging out for whatever it may be. Yeah, boy, because, yeah. So speaking of that, 
talk to me some about bosses and how they get in the way of productivity. When I worked in the corporate world and I was in, in, doing creative work, I would constantly get, you know, calendar invites for a meeting to, to brainstorm all together and in a, like a, two hours or in 15 minutes. And we'd all get in the room and then we'd be staring at each other. And sometimes an idea or two would come out, but we, we oftentimes, you know, in the moment, ended up talking about the fact that Kathy has a birthday next week and we should get cupcakes for her. And then a debate rolls out about who has the best cupcakes in town. And then someone brings up the game on Saturday and all of a sudden we haven't brainstormed anything. And, you know, there's still a debate about the, who has the best cupcakes. So I encourage bosses to make sure that you ask them for tangible, measurable things before they come to the meeting. That way they know what's expected of them. And they know they need to do some work before the meeting. And then they have time to do it. So come with three ideas for an event or come with three taglines or come with five ideas for how we can promote this event and we're all going to share them. And then have everyone share all five of their ideas. And that way people know, okay, I have to be prepared because I have to share these in front of everyone so I can't fudge it. They have the time to let their brain think of something creative and it's a measurable task, so everyone knows what's expected of them instead of coming to a meeting feeling like, oh, if I don't have an idea, what do I do? Yeah. And it allows you to be more productive because now you can sort through the ideas and say, okay, I think these five are the best. Now let's move forward with, you know, whatever it may be. I think bosses... Wow. <laughs> Um, yeah, that just give them time to work. And, and whether it's brainstorming or not, I think having measurable things you want to have accomplished in a meeting is a really important thing. Because just having a meeting to review something, I mean, most people can review things over email or a Hi. shared document. And so is that necessary to sit down? And when I started to, you know, sort of move into management, I ended up having a lot of meetings standing up where I would just have everyone come, like, come meet me in the coffee, you know, coffee area. Right. And we, you know, we ended up staying there for five minutes instead of an hour because people would just download things and I would delegate and I would, you know, sort of give high fives and say, that's a great job. Now we're going to work on this or, you know, I need you to work on that. And everyone sort of knew what they needed to do. Everyone came with whatever they needed to come with. And then we only spent 10, 5, 10, 15 minutes together instead of hours. Because sometimes those things last for hours and most of the people in the room don't necessarily need to be there. Well, there is that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of times the meeting is totally unnecessary and they're having it because they think they should have meetings. Right. Oh, yeah. I know. It's yeah, such a waste of time. Amazing. So you have to ask yourself, what do I want to accomplish in this meeting? You know, do I want to get yeah. a bunch of ideas and then decide and then move forward? Or are we, you know, what is the purpose of everyone spending an hour here? You know, is it worthwhile? And can I accomplish this with an email or can I accomplish this with, um, you know, with just going by their desk. The other thing is, so, which is so funny, and I, I had a boss that used to do this to me all the time. He used to send me these lengthy emails, and then he'd walk down the hallway to my office and say, I sent you an email, and then he'd download everything that he just sent me in the email. <laughs> and I just thought to myself, I mean, it was, it got to the point where it was comical, and, you know, he was a great boss, but, you know, that part I thought to myself, that's so unproductive. Why don't you just come yeah. down here and download to me in person, you know, if you were going to make the trip anyways? And so I think that's often a good time to get FaceTime with employees that you might not else, you know, so, you know, going to them and saying, hey, I think you'd be great on this project, you know, can you work on it, give them something measurable and tangible that you want them to accomplish and delegate to them. And then you have that face to face time, you didn't clog up their inbox with an email. Right. And it's a better use of your time than spending, you know, hours typing everything out, you can definitely often explain something easier in person than, you know, laying it all out via email. And, you know, then if there are more questions and things like that, you can go back and forth on email, but I would also encourage people to pick up the phone more. I know, you know, everyone's yeah. like, I hate the phone. I don't like to talk on yeah. the phone. And you know, everyone's so anti phone, but I think so much could be accomplished over the phone when you hear someone's voice 
and um, not clogging, like I said, not clogging up emails, um, just being able to have a conversation or delegate something quickly or answer a question or address a concern as opposed to going back and forth on email. It's just, you know, a wait, it seems to me a waste of time when it's done in excess. So this is fascinating to me. Uh, I completely agree with you. And, and I, I think it really speaks to how we've gotten into these habits of behavior. Instead of stopping and thinking, what is the best way for me to communicate this? We just defer to whatever this, you know, most common method of communication is. Right. And it's rarely picking up a phone. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Which could be so much quicker. Yes. Yeah. Well, the other thing I wanted to say about meetings is so often when I've been in meetings, someone will interrupt with, with something else that's either related or not related. And then that will become a discussion instead of the boss or whoever's running the meeting saying, we need to talk about that. Come see me during open hours or, you know, talk to Jennifer about that after this meeting or whatever it may be, as opposed to then having a whole side conversation or something that has nothing to do with what the meeting was about, park it yeah. and, and, I'll, yeah. and but tell them it's important. I tell, address it and say, I know this is important, but not, not now. Right. Because then I, I've been in meetings for hours sometimes because those things, those side conversations have come up and they can be anything from very casual things like where should our Christmas party be to, you know, someone else talking about, you know, a budget for something as opposed to, you know, staying on task with whatever it is we were talking about. So all of these things are valuable and important, but you need to make sure if you want to be productive that it's being addressed when it needs to be addressed. And so being able to right. park things during a meeting and making sure your staff knows you care about their concerns or whatever it is, but to, to talk to them or talk to someone else at a different time and not waste everyone else's time having that side conversation. Yeah, that's a great point. And that does happen so often. Ugh. I know. <laughs> uh, th this is <laughs> that's why we're talking about it. That's right. Uh, yeah, Lindsay, this is such great information. I really, I appreciate this conversation so much. Uh, besides the fact that I learned some things, um, I just think this is so valuable for the people who are listening to this right now. And so many great ideas. Will you share with them how they can find you, whatever you've got going on and, you know, whatever you'd like to share out there, please? Sure. Uh, you can visit my website, which is www.cendless.com. So C as in vision, S-E-E, -E, and then endless as in ongoing.com. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Lindsay Anvik or um, under LinkedIn. I often post articles and things related to productivity, creativity, leadership, marketing on there and share other interesting things that I find. So I would love to hear from any of you guys and um, help you out. Awesome. Thank you. And speaking of you guys, uh, thank you for tuning in. I know this has been a great episode for you with a lot of great information and things to think about a little differently. Uh, and I'd like to thank our sponsor. Uh, if you would like to get a free trial of audible.com as well as a free audiobook, just go to audibletrial.com slash business growth to sign up for the trial. As always, continue to prosper and be curious. And until we meet again on another episode of Accelerate Your Business Growth, goodbye and good day. Spark innovation across your federal agency with IT hardware, software, and services from Connection Public Sector Solutions. Your technology procurement challenges will meet their match as Connection's dedicated account managers offer exceptional customer service, and our extensive list of supported federal contracts means you'll always get a price that works for your budget. Learn more about innovation for your agency with Connection Public Sector Solutions at connection.com slash fedcontracts. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Oh, that's a chair we used to do in softball. Uh, what? It's, uh, actually Geico's. Whenever someone hit a triple, we would wave our bats and yell, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. But we never got to use it because we would only hit home runs. Annoying. The phrase is from Geico because they help save people money? Geico? Yeah, they were our team sponsor.
GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Hey friends, this is Jim Knight, former 21-year Hard Rock executive turned best-selling author and top 10 keynote speaker. And I'm Brant Menzwar, former frontman of Hollywood's most dangerous band turned top 10 motivational speaker and best-selling author. We host the how-to podcast, Thoughts That Rock, where we talk to rock stars, athletes, CEOs, astronauts, and even next door neighbors who share their expertise and opinions. Together, we tackle the most interesting and challenging topics of today. Whether you want to learn how to become more confident, how to deal with anxiety at work, or how to write a hit song, or use Brazilian Jiu Jitsu in life, we've got hundreds of episodes to help amp up your life and move you forward. Subscribe to Thoughts That Rock wherever you listen to podcasts and check out evergreenpodcast.com for more information.